exhaust ventilation. In the last video, we looked at natural ventilation with windows. And um, I wanted to anticipate the, the possibility that you may not be able to accommodate windows or uh, enough windows in your design to effectively ventilate it. So for example, I've changed the fractional area operable to from 50% to 1%. And now with this smaller amount of openings, I'm getting a lot, uh, a lot more air conditioning, a lot more overheating because if we look at our um, ventilation rates here, we're only getting a maximum of about 3.7 air changes per hour. Remember before we were getting over 100 in some cases. So if your design can't accommodate enough window area, um, we can look at how to deal with uh, exhaust ventilation by installing uh, mechanical exhaust fans. Now, Honeybee um, used to be able to do this, and I believe that they took this functionality out. And so I'm gonna show you how to put it back in again. <laughs> this is going to be a bit complex and advanced, um, but um, I'll show you how to sort of hack the program in order to do this. In fact, it's not really a hack. It's actually a really wonderful um, possibility that the uh, Honeybee uh, developers have left in here, which is this, um, this right here, the, uh, it says this option is just for advanced users of Energy Plus. You can input additional text strings here that you would like written into the IDF. The IDF is the file that is being run as a simulation. And I'll show you what that looks like. If I take, um, I'm going to open up the directory where this IDF file is located. And you can see, here's my path, Windows, Users, Brendan, Simulation, Unnamed, Open Studio, Run. Whew, it's a long path. But in this are a whole bunch of files that Open Studio and Grasshopper or Honeybee has made. There's an IDF file right here, and if I right-click on this, uh, and open it in Notepad, you can see that the file is, is really just a text file. It says what version of Energy Plus this is, uh, the time steps per hour, that it's going to simulate, starts with a whole bunch of life cycle costs which we're not using. And as you go down in the file, it gives information about your design. So you've got a building, it's mine is skewed off the north axis, it's located in a city, urban environment, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see each of the individual um, geometries and uh, the characteristics of each room. Um, Another way of looking at this file is something called a uh, it's utility that you get through Energy Plus called an EP launch. And in this is something called the IDF editor. And the IDF editor has um, a comprehensive list of all classes or objects that are available to the program. And it's a huge list of hundreds of different modules. Now, Honeybee has not implemented every single one of these, but what they do is leave the possibility open for you to use this on your own. Now, be careful because there's lots and lots of things that can go wrong as you do this. Um, I'm going to show you one of them, not one. <laughs> I'm going to show you one of these objects, not what can go wrong. Hopefully, this will all go right. Um, but what we're interested in for this. Um, uh, for this simulation is introducing a fan and um, that fan is going to be supplemental to the economizer that's already in the project. So I'm going to add a new object here and I'm just going to call this um, exhaust fan and I'm going to just leave everything um, as it is and I'll, uh, I'll show you why in a second. I'm going to save this IDF file as a different name. And then I'm going to open this as a text file here. 
and then do a search for that fan that I just made. There, exhaust fan. So now this object is one that I want to copy over to my Honeybee cam canvas. So I'm going to press Control C. I'm going to go to my canvas and I'm going to find a blank place. I'm going to drop a panel there. I'm going to double click and then I'm going to paste it in. Copy, paste. Okay, like that. And I need to make it multi line data. And I um, now I have that component that I just copied over. Now there are some, some variables I want to change, but this gives me the basic, um, the, the, the basic uh, format that I will, or I can right now, I'm going to add this to my model. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to toggle this to false. I'm going to put this in control sh um, shift to add to the string. And um, I'm going to add a zone or zone list. The zone name uh, should be in these attributes here. So if I go to simulation name identifier, I'm going to get a value here. Oh, that's face. I'm sorry. It's here in room. And that's the name of the zone. So I'm going to just right click copy data only and where the zone is. Before the comma, I'm going to paste that there. So now I've got the room in. Um, the schedule name, I want to make the same as the uh, schedule. Whoops, where to go? This schedule here, uh, which is this vent, vent cooling schedule. Um, and actually, it occurs to me, you know what I'm going to do is rather than do it this way, uh, you can see sort of a long way of doing this. Um, I'm going to show you how to do this a uh, cool way, uh, kind of similar to the way we did these uh, custom outputs before. So I'm going to I'm going to copy and pa paste this uh, Python. Uh, and I'm going to put the room value in here, uh, the room name, and then I'm going to put the schedule name in here and then the other um, variables that I want are well let's just start there so I'm gonna take this I'm gonna copy it control C and then I'm gonna go into the Python code and where I had my code here I'm gonna paste it like that um, one issue is that this uh, these brackets are gonna throw an error so I'm gonna, I need to um, replace those brackets with something else, anything else. I'm gonna use a, um, a parentheses. So I'm gonna find the bracket and replace with parentheses. Uh, find, replace, 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 replace. And then I'm gonna make sure I'm not replacing things that I actually need find the next one there's nothing there I'm going to do the end bracket and end parentheses replace like so okay and then instead of this room name like this I'm going to name, name this uh, room and the schedule name I'm going to name schedule or SCH for the flow, I'm going to name it, uh, I want to do ACH. I'm going to do all lowercase here. Oops, not parentheses, brackets. Same here, I messed that up. And then for what else? Uh, instead of natural ventilation, I'm going to name this exhaust ventilation. and fan pressure oh instead oh no sorry i'm not going to do that sorry i'm just going to leave that as a as a permanent not as a variable but as a permanent exhaust same with the fan pressurize i'm going to put this at 650 
I'm going to put the fan total at one. Um, and I think all these other things I can keep. Uh, the minimum indoor temperature, this is going to be a similar issue as we had with the natural ventilation. So I'm going to add that as a variable. And same with this. And then this. And then for the minimum, wait, what am I doing here? This is the minimum temperature. This is the maximum temperature. This is the delta. So I'm going to name that TD. And then this is the minimum outdoor temperature. I'm going to name that uh, T out. And then I'm not going to give a maximum outdoor temperature. And this should be good to go. I've got an error. Oh, I have an error because I need to uh, make these variables. So the variables are uh, room schedule uh, ECH T min T max T D and T out. Hopefully that works. Nope. Rain new, new room is not defined. I think this might be because I need to define this in the component here. So I need to add all of those variables here. Yes. Yay. Okay. So now I should get um I actually need to make what's going on here? I need to make um all these numbers. So I can use these numbers that we assigned before for my T min T max, T out, T D, and then the schedule is already there. Vents cooling schedule, the room is there. And oh, I don't have an air change per hour. So I'm going to change that to be 10. Well, 10. Just organize these a little bit. And so we should see those being adjusted. So 10 air changes, um, ventilation, cooling, room, 23 degrees, 27.5, 12. Good. So that all looks good. Um, and then this output will then go into my strings there. And we should be good to go. Okay, so I realized I made two mistakes on that previous um, set of runs. Um, one is that you need to make sure that you flatten the strings here. Um, so go to right click, go to flatten, um, make sure that it is flattened and um, that will, um, uh, whoops, Add strings, go to flatten there. Um, that will resolve one of the problems I had. The second problem that I had is that I realized uh, in this definition, this says the design flow rate calculation method is flow per flow rate per zone, uh, but then I don't have any 
um, the, the, uh, the, the variable that I changed was the air changes per hour. So I need to change this right here, the flow per zone, and this should say air changes per hour, like that. And now this will reference that and make sure that it runs at 10 air changes per hour. So sorry about that. Uh, this should be fixed now, and I'm going to go ahead and run this again, and I'll show you the result. Yeah, so what we're seeing now is that we've got about 14 air changes per hour. With That's our 10 air changes per hour um, that we added as supplementary ventilation uh, fan-based cooling, and then another four or so air changes per hour that the economizer is providing within the ideal load system. So these are additive measures. Uh, it's not one replacing the other. Um, and then we're getting um, associated reductions to the cooling um, because of the uh, added fan. Uh, now, importantly, the fan energy does get reported here. So let me show you this. This is this 5.81 uh, kilowatt hours per square meter. Um, and however, that number depends a lot on this number right here, the fan pressure rise, as well as the, some of these efficiencies and coefficients. And without knowing more about your specific building and the ventilation path, this is really difficult to estimate. So I wouldn't uh, put too much weight on uh, this number here. Um, for now, I think we'll just ignore it in this class and we can come back to it at a later point uh, once we have specific designs. Um, the other thing I was going to mention is that in order to, uh, right now we've got 1% of the window area modeled as open area or operable area. If we want to, to um, take that out and say there's no operable windows, um, I should underline that the way to do this properly using this method that I've developed here is to make this fractional area zero. Um, the reason is we don't want to disable this completely uh, because our schedule, our vent cooling schedule that this uh, fan is using is, is running through this uh, window opening. And so even if, if this is zero, the window schedule or the ventilation cooling schedule will still be in effect. It'll be stored in the, in the um, file. But if we get rid of this component completely, that ventilation schedule will, will not be written into the file. And so we won't be able to use it in this component here. I hope that makes sense. When you, um, when you work on this, I'd like you to uh, first start by um, trying different air changes per hour in the assignment I've given you. I've asked you to look at one air change, five air changes, and 10 air changes to see the effect on the heating and cooling and on comfort. And then once you have a sense of that, then try out the natural ventilation with some different uh, operable areas um, with no fan whatsoever. And in order to, to simulate this with no fan, simply uh, disconnect this output disconnect this from additional strings like that so this will be standalone it can be remaining in the file but it won't be connected to the simulation mm -hmm.